Welcome to the team reveal video for game week six. As I said in my team selection video earlier in the week, I was contemplating a transfer in midfield. Ferran Torres was on the chopping block with two free transfers this week. I wanted to use just one, so I'll go into game week seven with two free transfers. I can attack the Chelsea fixture swing. I can start thinking about jumping off guys like Jota, Luke Shaw, Ronaldo, Lukaku. Which way will I go? Still thinking about all of that. I want to go into game week seven with as much flexibility as possible. And so for that reason, this week I've only used one transfer. It is in midfield, and we're going to see who I've brought in for Ferran Torres. Ferran Torres, see you later, mate. It's time for a new face in midfield. So we're going to see my team, but before we do that, I want to say a massive thank you again to everyone who's liked and subscribed. If you haven't done that already, make sure you do so. Subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get into the team reveal video for game week six. In goal, Sanchez is away to Crystal Palace this week. I'm pretty happy so far with how Sanchez has been going. It would be nice to see him get more save points or more bonus, but I'll take the clean sheets. I'm actually expecting Brighton to keep a clean sheet in this game. It is away. Crystal Palace is a tough game. It's a derby, but I'm still happy with the Brighton defense, and I think Sanchez is the best 4.5 goalkeeper at the moment. In defense, I'm hoping Trent Alexander-Arnold is feeling better after he missed out last week due to sickness. Hope he's had his cod really can soldier on. If he does not play, I've got Livermento coming in off the bench. I'll take his five points again if that's the case. Samedo is away to Southampton. I think there might be goals in that game. I'm keen to see how Bruno Lars lines up with his team, whether he goes with four at the back or whether he goes with the three at the back and then plays the wing backs. I don't know if Marcel will be playing this game. So if you've got Marcel, keep a close eye on the team news before the game. We know that Ryan Ape Nori did play in the Carabao Cup earlier this week, but he is knocking on the door, and after Marcel's performance last week, I think his days are numbered. But I am hoping that Bruno Lage sticks with the three at the back. Semedo is much more threatening when he's in that wing-back position as opposed to playing as a right-back in a back four. So if they do shift to a back four, and it looks like the way Bruno Lage is going to be continuing to play, then I will have my questions and doubts about Semedo long-term. But at the moment, he is a good option, and I don't think Wolves have turned into a bad defense overnight despite that poor performance against Brentford. Luke as well. We know that this guy creates lots of chances, but they're not high quality chances. They're low quality chances. But when you've got Cristiano Ronaldo in the team, they don't necessarily have to be great chances for Luke Shaw to get assists. So he's got Aston Villa at home this week. Watkins and Ings are a threat. United seem to keep conceding these soft goals. I hope that doesn't continue in this game against Aston Villa at home. I'm hoping for a clean sheet and maybe an attacking return against Aston Villa. His days are certainly numbered in my team as I've got my eyes on Rudiger Alonso and Reese James, as well as Cancelo for the next couple of weeks. Okay, moving into midfield, you can see there Ismail Assar is in the team. I was leaning towards Rafinha. I don't think there's too much to split these two players. In fact, I think probably Rafinha is just the better player. He offers a little bit more in terms of assists. I think Ismail Assar edges him when it comes to goals. We can see that by his expected goal data. It's important to know that Ismail Assar's expected data and his underlying statistics are definitely inflated after having played Norwich last week. But prior to that game, he was still putting up decent numbers, but it's those two fixtures that he's got coming up in game week six and game week seven. He's got Newcastle at home and Leeds away. Two sides that have conceded the most big chances so far this season. A really high expected goals conceded. He's got Liverpool in game week eight, but with the moves that I'm thinking over the next few weeks, I might shift to a four at the back, which means that Saar may not even have to play that game against Liverpool. I can bring him back off the bench for the fixtures after, but I don't really mind playing Ishmael Ismail Assar, even against Liverpool at home. I think he's a quality player. It's very likely he's on penalties for Watford as well. It's a bit of a talisman for that side. So I'm happy to have Ishmael Assar on my team. And the reason why I picked him over someone like Rafinha is that it came down to which player was going to give me the greatest benefit this week. Now, obviously, you don't make transfers with just this week in mind, but my plan is to move Jota on next week anyway, and I was going to do Jota to Ishmael Assar next week and bring Rafinha in this week. So I was going to have Rafinha and Saar in the team, but just bring them in at different times. But Rafinha's fixture against West Ham, he is in a bit of an injury cloud as well. There's a bit of a doubt over whether he'll play. I actually do think he will play, though. But that game against West Ham, I think, is quite difficult for Leeds. And fundamentally, I would rather have Ishmael Assar at home against Newcastle than have Rafinha at home against West Ham. I'm likely to bring in Rafinha next week for Leeds' good run, take Jota out of the team, 
But for now, I'd rather have Ishmael Assar against Newcastle. I think that's a fantastic fixture. We saw the amount of space Rafinha got on that right wing position as Matt Ritchie, who's playing left back for Newcastle, pushed forward. So I'm hoping that that space will be vacated and Ishmael Assar can expose that. Traore is in the team as well, clinging on to the faint hope that he'll get an attacking return in this game against Southampton. I think both teams really do need a win. He's got Newcastle the week after, so the fixtures are still there for Traore. If I had no other fires to put out in my team this week. I probably could have thought about moving him on, but I wanted to get rid of Ferran Torres. I got rid of Ferran Torres just before the price drop as well. For now, Traore stays in the team. Salah comes close to a captain option. Brentford's defense has looked good, but they haven't played any of the top seven yet. So it's going to be a real test to see how good, how legitimately good the Brentford defense are. Jota as well. I'm hoping this is the week that he pays back some of the faith. One of the strategies I had on the wild card was to go for guys like Jota and Torres that other managers wouldn't be able to get to. Get those points in the nice fixtures that they had between game weeks five and game weeks eight but it just hasn't turned out that way so far so Jota really has one more week in the team before I'm likely to move him on up front Banford Ronaldo and Antonio I love the look of that attacking lineup I'm pretty confident that I'll go with Ronaldo as captain although I think Antonio is a good shout as well Right now, it's likely to be Ronaldo captain with Salah as the vice captain. Bamford comes into this under an injury cloud. There are doubts about whether he'll play, but I'm happy with the depth on my bench. I've got Sissoko, Livermento, and Williams, all guys who will play, and they've got decent fixtures. Sissoko at home to Newcastle. Watford have shifted to a 4-2-3-1, and that means Sissoko is playing a little bit deeper. So that's the reason why we didn't see him get as far forward in that last game against Norwich. But if he's still going to get the 90 minutes, he can come off the bench if any of these guys don't play. Livermento as well at home against Wolves. I think he's got a great opportunity to even get attacking returns. I see some managers are talking about playing Livermento over someone like Semedo. And that's a call I could make, but I'm happy to go with Semedo, keep Livermento on the bench, and he can come on if I need it. So that's the team for game week six. After a pretty disappointing game week five, I'm hoping to bounce back with a green arrow this week. As I look around at my starting 11, I'm expecting to see a green arrow, but I felt the same way last week and it didn't turn out. So we'll just have to wait and see how the players perform. Let me know in the comments below, have you made any transfers so far this week? What's your team looking like ahead of game week six? Are you going to captain Ronaldo? Are you going to go with Salah, Antonio, or maybe even a wild differential? Make sure you let me know. Like the video as well if you haven't already. Just give it a cheeky like subscribe as well if you're new around here and i'll see you in the next video take care